Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. I've created a concussion awareness series to give you the basics on concussion. So let's get started. What is a concussion? There's a lot of confusion about this, but a concussion is a kind of brain injury. Now, we have to kind of play a name game here because a concussion is really a type of mild traumatic brain injury, and mild only in comparison to a severe traumatic brain injury. Now, just because we say it's a mild TBI doesn't mean you don't feel bad and doesn't mean it can't cause you problems for months and years. So that's the first thing to know. A concussion is a kind of mild traumatic brain injury. How does a concussion happen? Well, a concussion occurs when there is a shaking injury of the brain. This can happen a lot of different ways. It can happen from a direct blow to the face, you know, the neck or the head. And you would think about that happening like in sports, right? Football, hockey, lacrosse, rugby. And that's a very obvious thing. But the other kind of way that you can get a concussion and get this shaking injury is if another part of your body gets hit or impacted and those forces are transmitted into your brain. A good example of this would be uh, car, car crashes, whiplash. Those are a lot of very common ways that you can suffer a concussion. Now, it's going to stop you here because some people are already thinking, well, if you don't black out, you don't have a concussion. That is not true. You do not have to lose consciousness to suffer a concussion. And I'll explain why in another video series. But when we're talking about the shaking injury, what I want you to also understand is not only is the inside of the brain being shaken, but it's also being twisted. And this is very important because there are structures in the middle of your brain and in your brain stem that when they get twisted in a concussion, they become injured. And it's responsible for a, the, the vast majority of symptoms that we see in people who are still suffering concussions two, three, uh, the symptoms of a concussion, two, three, six, uh, eight months, uh, a year later. So a concussion is a, uh, a type of brain injury. It's a mild traumatic brain injury. It's a shaking injury. You don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion. How many people suffer concussions? Well, there's estimates from 2015 that say a couple million people per year are having concussions, uh, uh, per year. Now, this obviously means a lot of people are going to go to the ER, a lot of people are going to go to family doctors, but there's a lot of people that aren't going to go because they don't know that they've had a concussion, they think they've just had their bell rung. So one of the reasons I'm making this series is so that if you know someone that's going to fit some of these little signs and symptoms I'm going to give you, get them checked out. Because even though a concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury, it's not really mild. It can uh, cause you a lot of problems. I'll just give you an example. Uh, there was a study done recently that said that about 50% of people that had suffered a concussion at two weeks post-injury, they couldn't return to their work. And at a month, it was 26% of people couldn't return to the work they had before the concussion. I mean, that can be catastrophic. So if you know someone that you think's had a concussion, maybe it could be your son or your daughter playing sports, they've had a slip, they've had a fall, because that's another mechanism you can get concussions. You know, there's sports injuries. I mean, 53% of head injuries uh, for kids under 19 are from sports. So sports are by far the biggest, uh, you know, <laughs> the biggest uh, suspect when it comes to the head injury. And it's all sports, essentially, are, are, this could happen in. Uh, it could be soccer, rugby, basketball, any type of, you know, injury to the head, a fall. Unfortunately, I've seen quite a few uh, kids that have been injured on playgrounds where they fall off the monkey bars or they are at a swimming pool and they dive in and they slip on the edge. Any type of impact to the head, neck, or face can create a concussion. Any type of impact to another part of the body, and those forces are transmitted to the head, that can also cause a concussion. So that's kind of the name game. What are the symptoms of a concussion? Well, there's kind of two things to look at. There's things that you, the observer, could see on someone who's just had an injury, and then there are things that they might tell you. So let's start with what you might see. What you might see when someone's had an injury to the head, or this shaking injury, is number one, they could have a vacant stare. You know, like, like, like no, no one's home. They could also be unresponsive, meaning they're laying there on the ground and you say, hey, are you okay? And they don't respond. And you shake them and say, are you okay? And then they don't respond. That's definitely a sign of a, a potential concussion. Uh, they could also be wobbly, you know, have those kind of wobbly legs. Uh, you've seen people like probably on football, they get nailed and you see them kind of get up and they're wobbling. That's called ataxia. That's a kind of uncoordinated gait. So that's certainly another thing that can happen. Uh, th you might also see them, you know, clutch their head, uh, which usually means, you know, their head is hurt. Now, in terms of what they might tell you about what they're feeling, number one, they could say they have a headache that's like all over their head. 
They could complain of dizziness. Uh, they could complain of vision problems. They could complain of uh, feeling like they're going to vomit. Now, the thing about a concussion is those symptoms that happen, they usually develop pretty rapidly, but they develop over a few hours, so they can kind of change and transform. So over six to eight hours, that person might tell you that they're having difficulty concentrating or difficulty rem remembering. In fact, one of the signs you might see is a loss of consciousness. You might uh, see them actually be totally incapacitated. Uh, they might also tell you that they have amnesia. They don't remember what happened. Those are all different signs and symptoms that if that happens in someone you're watching, uh, they need to go get evaluated immediately. Now here's probably the biggest takeaway from this video today. The damage and the symptoms from a concussion usually aren't structural because a concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. So there's usually no imaging like a CT scan or an MRI that's going to show any damage. That doesn't mean that the person's okay. That just means that they probably have a mild traumatic brain injury. Now, on these next videos that I'll be uh, going over with you, we'll be talking about what are the consequences of a concussion and what do you do about it and how long do they last. But the thing I want you to understand is that 99% of the time, imaging, x-rays certainly not going to show anything. MRI and CTs almost never show anything. That doesn't mean you're okay. That just means you don't have a severe traumatic brain injury. So the signs and symptoms of a concussion, loss of consciousness, ataxia, unresponsive, vacant stare, symptoms, headache, dizziness, irritability, slowed reaction time, insomnia. Those are all, you put all those things together and the person's probably had a concussion. In another video, I'll explain how they're graded, uh, how long they last. But the takeaway is if you think that you've had some of those symptoms or you've, you know, somebody you love has had that happen to them, go get them evaluated right now and make sure there's not something more serious. In the next videos, I'll talk about uh, what people do for concussions.